Welcome everybody to a new episode of the OTT podcast. My name is Tyler Thompson. I'm the editor in chief of Kentucky Sports Radio. And tonight I'm not only joined by Faith Barney, I'm joined by my husband, Matt. Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me back. Always happy to talk about my one of my favorite shows to rewatch, Friday Night Lights. I know, and we've been burning through it. Um, I, I do not appreciate the <laughs> uh, Grandma Saracen hate coming out of the gate with right. our, our other host, Barney. Yeah, so if you're not watching this, if you're just listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, we're also doing it on Zoom, so you can watch on Facebook. And Barney is still using the slightly offensive virtual background of Grandma Saracen with a big X on her face. How is it offensive? You know, we all have to die, and Grandma is like a cockroach. She just continues to survive season after season. This is like, you know, the nuclear blast comes, all these other characters come and go, and Grandma's still crawling around forgetting stuff. I love that you took some heat for your Grandma Saracen takes on Twitter. Oh, boom. From Jax Teller, who was just like, man, she's got dementia, <laughs> and you just keep crushing her. Yeah, Jax Teller from the top rope out of nowhere. I don't know what that was about, but, you know, Grandma Sarazen, I I just don't see how she's likable, but whatever. She doesn't do anything <sighs> to the plot. I think she had some great lines. I actually wrote some down in my notes for this season. So we're starting season four of our rewatch. We just finished up the second half of season three, and this is like the big shift in Friday Night Lights. We're no longer Dylan Panthers. We're East Dylan Lions. Yeah. So, Barney, what was your initial reaction to the <laughs> shift? Well, I knew it was coming, but I guess I just assumed um, I just assumed that Wade was going there, that, like, something was going to – or, like, you know, when they had the split – that, you know, they were going to offer it to Wade, which would, in real life, have probably made the most sense, not taking it away from the coach who just brought him to state. Yeah. Matt, did you think it was a realistic shift? Um, yeah, I, I think so. I, they had to be careful about, you know, getting stale. Um, I listened to your all's podcast of the last part of season three, while I agree, had they won state, it would have been strange and not realistic for Coach Taylor to be shipped off. But this is Texas football, and See? you know it only matters if you got that ring. So <laughs> if air. you didn't have that ring, you get all the excuse for you to walk walk yourself out. And I think they maybe thought that they had some you know traction here with Joe McCoy as a character and maybe even not finish telling the J.D. McCoy story. And this was a new challenge to give uh, to give uh, Coach Taylor. And I also feel like, uh, you know, Tyler's point about, you know, these characters are moving on. They're no longer on the team. So do we want to all of a sudden start off with these new players that are going to have to play with J.D. McCoy? Or do we start off with these new players at a different team? So I, I think for a storytelling standpoint it made sense i think you could argue that it didn't make sense for him to get shipped out but you know that's what creates drama exactly i, think that they, I will agree with you i think they did an awesome job of keeping things fresh really season after season there was always like some sort of drama like it was either mm -hmm. will he stay or will he go or um you know in season one to two and then season two to three was just a total cluster but then in this season I do agree. I feel like they could have made – I was just ready to, for them to just set up this whole huge build-up to East versus West Dillon with, uh, with uh, Wade as the coach of East, East Dillon and, like, and just thinking that that was just going to be the whole thing and they were going to be doing all the, the uh, hazing and pranks and all the stuff and that J.D. was going to, you know, go follow him there or whatever and it was just going to be like this huge, like – Thing, which it ended up being it was just the coach had the coaches wrong yeah could you see jd mccoy surviving at east dillon <laughs> well the new jd mccoy maybe so because he transformed from this quiet kind of sympathetic figure into full-on bag he's terrible i mean his hair like i feel like you can tell his character development with his hair it's almost like he got like frosted tips and he's gelling it and went full-on hands bro yeah, he really did. So let's start out. Um, let's. Oh, bring Matt. Up well, Matt, what do you think about the uh, Hansborough comparison? Can you see it? 
I get to show up a picture of me at Tyler. Tyler Hansborough. Hansborough. Oh my lord! I don't obsess about uh, not Kentucky oh. players like like. He's Barney booby does. eyes. You remember booby not eyes? Not just that, but his 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 uh, mouth oh, is yeah. always hanging open. Like he's like a mouth breather. He's always yeah. Just, uh, so is Mark Paul Gossler as Zach Morris. <laughs> yeah. Tyler, Barney can you pull up that text? I, I'm that pulling I it you? up. I'm not going to put it on the uh, on the thing, but yeah. Let me see. Hold it up to the camera. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's fair. Uh, you can't really. See. Yeah. 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 No, you I mean, can see that really fair. Well. Yeah. Sure. I'll give you I'll have give the split that. screen I did. I'll find <laughs> no, I it. Don't. I'll find uh, it. I'll yeah, show I, you, Matt. I really want you on my side here. It looks just I'm, like I'm on your side too. I think he I, looks I like think him. he looks like him. I think we're all on the same side. <laughs> <laughs> I want you obsessing. Hang on a second. Um, <laughs> I I think what happened was is his character eventually kind of gave in to, you know, the attitude of his dad and fully embraced yeah. you know it, it, it's like when anakin skywalker became darth vader so. see this is we bring the the star wars references when we have matt on the show there you go tyler matt, our, plug your podcast. Our text photo history oh, we'll plug it later so oh god i can't imagine i'm sure yeah it's i'm having to scroll for a while <laughs> we text a lot this is so, a good one hold on well, we can't see it yeah uh i got right <laughs> <laughs> Which funny I'm not sure what, what the context was of that, but it was pretty good. Mm. I, I'm pretty sure I can I'm pretty figure, sure it out. figure out the context. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has something it's to do age masks, masks yeah. or non-masks. Right. Here's Mariah Carey dancing. Oh man, the the missing '90s music video podcast. We I know. Did such a good job on that. That was it. Oh, oh well. No. Yeah. Anyway, let's get started. I think it would be good to start with first impressions and new characters. Oh my God! You, of course, you have that on there. Ooh, that's a good one. The one happy moment of John Rayburn's life that you <laughs> have documented. All right, I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to start with Vince. Vince. You see Vince. Yep. All right. So Vince is probably, obviously, the most important new character of season four. We meet him. He's a troubled teen who's literally running from the law the police you know <clears throat> the term is juvenile delinquent exactly he's been in juvie they want to give him one more chance so their solution is maybe coach taylor can help him out so barney what was your first impression of vince howard uh, i liked the whole storyline i liked where it was going and i never stopped liking vince he was great he may be he may be my second favorite Vince. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, Vince oh, Gill time on that one. Vince Vince Gill still still number one. Uh, just because we're BFS. Under ten minutes. Under ten minutes for, ten yeah. minutes for yeah. the first Vince Gill reference. You know, that just because we're BFS or when I came and I and I stayed with you guys and you know, we hung out for a little bit, you know, just before the UK game, you know, just just, just chilling. Like, just like we usually do on Saturday mornings. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, Vince is a great character, as is Vince Gill. But uh, I think this was – wasn't this one of Michael B. Jordan, the actor's first big roles? I think. It's the first thing that I know from for, for, for and he, He's so could good. Could Michael He's B. Jordan have landed Amy Grant, though? I mean <laughs> – It's a great question. Mm. It, I think he could Maybe have back in the day, yeah. Maybe so. We'll never know. All right, Matt, was your, what was your first impression of Vince? Uh, I mean, he's a solid actor. I don't think we had anybody like him, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so just uh, kind of disadvantaged from the get-go. Yeah, um, it's a different world at yeah. East Allen. If I had to think about, you know, not not to say everybody was was had the you know the road paved in, in red carpet and gold for them, but definitely he started from the bottom and had to work his way up um created a lot of conflict with coach that maybe didn't really have that much with, with players great point uh, I, I, you could you could maybe compare him to a couple other different players um but like smash or saracen but quite honestly vince is vince so yeah he's, vince he's, is he's vince. a great complex character i think that they did with vince what they tried to do with grandma with saracen Not <laughs> grandma, i'm saying I'm talking about the whole trying to juggle all of this really hard home life with football is what I'm trying to say. So okay. I think they tried to pull that off with Sarazen, 
and you know there were a couple of episodes like oh matt can't go out on a date because grandma is being grandma or whatever but for the most part there's really no comparing vince's home life and his situation with sarazen i mean at the end of the day yeah. Yeah. There's and had it made compared to Vince, but I think that what the writers tried to accomplish with that whole man, I really feel for this quarterback because he's thrust into this crazy situation and he's also got all this stuff going on at home. They they pulled off with resounding success with Vince's story. I would agree, yeah. and we'll we'll talk more about Vince obviously as we go along because he he is the main character I think of the rest of the series. Let's go to Jess. What were your first impressions of Jess, fake Barney? I, I, I mean, there was a lot of new characters all at the same time. She did a really good job of, like, changing her appearance a lot. Um, so I, I found myself asking Baby Bob, okay, is this the one that Landry's talking to? Or is this the one, like, like I, I, yeah. I didn't, there's too many new characters, um, you know, all, all at once with the whole new – show the with the i mean it basically is a new show i mean it's yeah. a whole new everything um and so it wasn't until really the second half of this season that i really started to get into her character and like her a whole lot i don't feel like i think that maybe she was kind of like uh what, what who had um who had 16 minutes in for the first oc reference but i think that she's <laughs> kind of like uh summer so you remember how at the beginning of 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 uh, the oc summer was kind of a secondary character. She wasn't on the main billing at the beginning of the show and everything. And yeah. then as the season went on, she got more and more speaking lines and more and more involved in the story. And I feel like that same thing kind of happened with her because, you know, all this, she goes from just being kind of a girlfriend thing to a really central character later on in, in season four and five. Yeah, Matt, what, what did you think of Jess's first couple, or I guess first seven episodes? Well... I would probably forget about Jess, right. even though that I don't think that she's terribly forgettable. Um, I like that she doesn't tend to be a typical female but mm -hmm. uh, that we've had before, except for the fact that she has caught young Landry's eye. Oh, and, Landry. And so there's a little bit of the, you know, Landry puppy dog eyes to the girl that's really not into him. And she just became that for a little bit. Um, and without, you know, spoiling it, which is really going to go through one episodes, one through seven, you know, other than, you know, Landry is interested in Jess and Jess, you know, is a tough cookie and her dad runs a barbecue. Eh, you know, J Jess ain't, ain't bad. She just can sometimes be a little forgettable. Okay, I think that's fair. Jess's brighter days are to come, so. How about Landry shooting his shot, though? I mean, this is the second girl that's clearly way out of his league. Um, he's confident, man. You can't even like, see his eyebrows, and he still goes into it with full confidence. I feel like Landry's just going to ask any any girl. I mean, you know, you got to shoot your shot, you know, whether. You miss you can land Tyra. You don't he can she's land Tyra us. or, you know, the daughter from the barbecue place or the waitress from the beat ups. I mean, you guys He's got his shot, car with the red interior that is unfortunately burned. He had to burn up. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, that stinks. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next new character we will discuss Luke Cafferty. Um, I'll start with Luke. So, yeah, I know. He is kind of a snooze fest early on. He originally starts at Dylan, but it's the oh-so-probably-realistic storyline that in order to get him to play at Dylan, he they put his mailbox in the school district when, in fact, he lives in East Dylan, which gives Tammy something to tackle as she is the principal of Dylan and has to be the one that does the right thing because Tammy always does the right thing and tell Luke that, no, you can't go to Dylan. You have to go to East Dylan because that's where you live. And the, these are the rules. And Tammy faces ridiculous backlash from the Dylan boosters and fans. I think they write Panther hater on her car and paint. I mean, he kind of serves multiple you know, roles in this whole series for a restart. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't mind Luke. I will agree he's kind of boring, but he's I think super they, needed, boring. they needed a foil for Vince too. So whenever he joins the team, 
he and Vince, you know, because East Dillon's a bad football team. I mean, everybody will see. They have to forfeit their first game. They're not good. And Vince Howard by himself was not going to save that team. So they had to bring in somebody. And Wait. I think, yeah, and I think bringing him in, you know, it kind of – it stokes the rivalry a little bit, but Matt, what did you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can understand about, you know, Luke not being the most interesting character. I, I, I think in, in the first couple of episodes, he's clearly a pawn yeah. between Dylan and, and East Dylan. Um, he's playing that role of just the player. I, I think he means well. I think he could have had a, a, a much worse attitude yeah. about having switch. He, he just said, look, I, I just want to play ball. And when they told him, like, you know, well, you, if you want to play ball, you have to play ball here. And it's like, well, but I, I have a better shot at, at playing at Dylan. And, you know, he, they're just like, well, sorry, that's not happening. And he just he kind of just embraced it, and he didn't whine or pout about it, I, I don't think. You know, he tried to get it to change. But, but I mean, I think he will evolve. I think he also got a curve hit it to him in the second half of season four. And that sucks for him. But – you know, uh, I, he can be not quite that entertaining. Barney, what do you think? I'm going to intentionally put $5 in the spoiler um, Venmo or whatever here <laughs> and, and come in with the hot take that, that Luke is, uh, is Coach's scal. Comes in mm -hmm. with the big hype. Yeah. And then Whatever, I mean, nothing happens with him. He ends up going to some, you know, getting offers from, I'm not going to say what happens, but I'm going to say he gets offers from these duty schools. But, like, in every single highlight reel that we see of him, he's blowing it up, man. He's playing offense and defense. I mean, and, and this, you know, when, when we start to see the team start to take off, to your point, it's a lot because of Luke. And I think Coach just completely botches his recruiting and focuses way too much on Vince. And and then Luke is, like, wasted. You think that means that that's the Billy Gillespie moment of of the first half of the season? What I had. That's what I had as really? the Billy moment. Yep. All right. Oh. All right. Well, yeah. I, think, I think wasted talent. And I think that's all on Coach's shoulders. Dang. Barney, Barney throwing shots at Coach Yep, he Taylor. should have stayed with killing his brother. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert for Bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Boy, season five got really intense. <laughs> season five got super dark, super quick. Well, did we know that? Spoiler alert, Friday Lights is a prequel to Bloodline. So. Yeah. It was, is it not? <laughs> the good okay. guy did a really bad thing. So, uh... Let's let's cover the final new character or the one that really matters to me, oh. Becky. Uh, oh, um, Becky. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and get this out. She was my least favorite character. Why? I mean, you need to explain this instead of just instead of just blind Becky hate. At least I justify my Sarah's and my, uh, she's grandma. She's terrible. Hate. She's absolutely right from the start. She's annoying. So she comes into the Friday Night Lights Lights world because Riggin slept with. Her mom, who's a waitress. Okay. And Riggins needs a place to stay, so he rents out a trailer on said waitress's property. Okay. Here comes Becky, already annoying. She's into pageants. She's, she, like, won't call people by just one name. She has to use their full name, which is always annoying. Like, oh, hey, Tim Riggins. Like, how you doing, Tim Riggins? And she's just obsessed with him. And why is she obsessed with him? They don't really give her a reason other than, I mean. He's Tim Reagan. Dude but... slept with her mom. Yeah, is that a, not gross to her? He's, he's kind of a bit of a drunk right now. He, oh, he we have a guess. Face. He doesn't really look that attractive at this <laughs> point in time. I, I, you know, I, what what is it that just makes Becky just <laughs> obsess? about Tim Riggins just does not make any sense. Baby Bob, what do you think of Becky? Uh, I hated her at first. I know. <laughs> but I also no feel like spoilers because we're only like seven first, episodes. First half of first half of season four. Okay. I, I so feel just like, when you first met her. Okay. She's very annoying. But I think she's kind of doing the best with what she's got. If you look at her mama, yeah. 
you know her deadbeat dad there's you can't you can't ask a lot of her as a high school girl with a slutty mom i thought becky was supposed to have good hair it's supposed to be becky with the good hair she look at that with the bad hair. no that, that is, is not that looks like a baby doll's hair that's some good curl <laughs> it's even would kill for those curls see baby bob guys don't understand like you yeah. don't but I, what really annoyed me so Matt, I went, do you like her hair I don't like anything about Becky. Yeah. I don't need to thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you would have my back. So the one thing that I, I noticed this time around that I don't know if I noticed the first time I watched about how annoying Becky is, she called Riggins at Saracen's dad's wake. Like who Oh does yeah, that was yet? awful. Who does, does she that? not know where he was though? I like it just She's manipulative, she's selfish. She's very selfish. And everything that but she's comes also to her she she totally is a victim of her own whatever she's 15 years old or whatever she is but it's selfish because no one else has ever cared about her or enough to tell her that she's being selfish yeah i mean you can see she's oh she her doesn't... mom's silly selfish and her dad's silly selfish so it's not surprising but that still doesn't mean that i don't find that annoying oh you still haven't given me a real reason why you don't like her you're just like I just gave you a whole she's bunch awful of she's the worst like yeah i gave you like 20 different reasons no, Tyler. Oh, what you want? I don't like her hair. I don't like her attitude. I don't like the fact that she calls people by their full name. Yes. I don't oh, like the fact that she's selfish. I don't like the fact that she's her full name. With, with, with the guy that, that fucked her. Excuse me. Oh. That said, <laughs> <laughs> well, well there went the out. tag. We put the tag oh, on our podcast. Yeah, so on podcast. yeah just. Can we have a jar for that, too? Yeah. <laughs> just, there's so many reasons why I hate Becky. So. I think it's just like every time she comes up to Riggins's truck window, He's like, hey, Tim Riggins, I need a ride to school. Hey, Tim Riggins. Did you not have any friends in high school that you used their full name or college? Not like no. that. I no, mean. Not, not I had some bases, no. Yeah. I don't know. Also, I, uh, I really enjoyed how episode six ended with Riggins telling her, Becky, shut up. That's the best line the whole I feel like I was the whole I feel like he was speaking for the audience there. Yeah. We're not Betty, supposed just, to like her. Shut and Riggins is uh his words are like currency anyway. You don't get a lot of it. So for it for like three lines to be wasted on Becky shut up was pretty good. Oh no. We've been signed out because our account is signed in from another device. Who who just try who who is hacking us? Okay, we are back. Sorry about the interruption. Uh, the KSR Zoom is a busy place these days. And my coworker, Nick Roush, was trying to log on to do 11 personnel. So, you know, if, if you're angry about this blip in the recording, please, please tweet, tweet him at, at Roush, K, at Roush oh. KSR. Um, even though he's had a rough week. You know, he's got I'm going to stop and, and tweet him right now. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking about Becky. Um, I think we've kind of... I think we've covered the ground. We've Becky. covered that subject. Becky's Becky. Becky's Becky. She was my least favorite character. Um, she was yours. Was she yours? I'm assuming. Easily, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Barney, was she we'll yours? Remain, so. um, no, new JD is the worst. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. New, new JD McCoy is yeah. terrible. What about you, baby Bob? I, new JD. He's just his dad, though. He's just become his dad. Right. Nope. His hair especially is terrible, like, where it's just got that, like, curly kind of frosty spike. And What does he look like? Well, uh, Baby Bob likes that kind of North Carolina look. So, Listen. The, the frosted tips, the, the tower no, hand frozen. I don't care oh. what you look like. If you, beat four, do, if you beat Duke four times, you can look like whatever you want, Ooh. right? Touche. Thank you. Touché. Exactly. <laughs> What about favorite character? Baby Bop, who was your favorite character of the first half of season four? I got to I, I, I didn't do my homework for this. I just walked out. I'll answer for her. I know who it is. It's Tam Sass. Yeah. Sass. Tam Sass. So we saw full on Tam Sass um, coming in. Tammy Taylor with her sassy self becoming the character that you were telling me that I was going to like all along. Um, that I just wasn't quite there, where she's just gone full on um, low cut. We'll say that. No, no, no. They cover her. What are you talking about? About her. They, got, they gave her age appropriate clothes. And her and her cowboy boots everywhere. Always with yeah. the cowboy boots. She basically wears the outfit that you wear if you're a girl to a country concert in North Carolina. 
<laughs> That's fair. Not even that. She's, she's, she's like business on the top, party on the bottom. I could see her <laughs> trying to go pee in the woods in the parking lot of the pavilion up here. She probably did do that. <laughs> she has a really good boss moment early in the season, though, when she tells that? off the boosters. That I was good. Julie, yeah. I could see Julie peeing in the woods. Yeah. No, yeah. Julie I mean, would totally pee in the woods and hook up with somebody while she was there. I mean, yeah. that is a country concert. Really <laughs> there is a lot of information that comes out about his past dating life on this podcast. <laughs> um, Tammy rolling up on the boosters at Applebee's. Um, was awesome how about tammy with the coin toss that was great that was great it was also good remember, um, remember we want to kick this way you want to call this move that <laughs> you gave him like three instructions and she did the opposite of every single one of them and walked it, it out was awesome i what? loved yeah. um it's not quite like a really fun moment but i thought it was a great moment for her when she is helping matt saracen after his dad died and he went she went to the funeral home with him yeah. And the funeral home directors like trying to swindle Matt Saracen into buying this like really not expensive nine thousand dollar casket, and she just takes over and is like, "You're not doing that to this kid." Like she's great. Like she's just really great. Like she takes over. I love her. So yeah, Tam Sass is definitely a trend that is on the rise. I would say. Everybody that when having not watched the show, everybody is like, "Tammy's the best. Tammy's the best." <laughs> I mean, she's great, like, to this point, but she's not the best. She's not worthy of, like, the... the Isn't the she the biggest she person gets. on the art? The like, focal yeah, point of the DVD this cover. Season, this season, I'm sold. I'm totally sold. She's awesome. All right. I, I'm surprised that you guys went with Tammy because I went with Buddy as my favorite character for the first half of season four because you get to see Buddy, who is always, you know died and true uh dylan panther booster it's who he is it's the first thing he identifies with and he he denounces that and becomes an east dylan lion which is just like a fascinating thing to watch um i loved it and there's that great part where eric kind of asks him to become a booster for the east dylan lions and he says you can't fake boosterism it's got to come from the heart the best, the best Buddy moment in this first half of this season was when um, Buddy shows up at the house, and you're like, yes. "Oh God, this is going to be a disaster." And Tammy's and like, "Tell like him yucking to go it away. up with the East Dillon alum." And I mean, that was the last thing that we expected. Yeah. We I, started laughing at that. Yeah. I totally agree with you. I think the line of the can't fake boosterism kind of set it up for us to think like, "Oh no, this is not going to work well." And having seen this episode a couple of times, I I forgot on the rewatch about the little twist there that even Buddy knows all the guys that he's doing. Oh, so. and he's he's from then on, he's just perfect with it. He loves he's it. More, more great writing. Buddy's character development, I think, is my favorite because yeah. he's always Buddy. Like, he's always true <laughs> to his nature. Yeah. But he also, you see growth in him, which is just the mark of a really good character. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've long talked about the arc for for Buddy Garrity, and I handed that it's coming. And this, to me, when they were at the J.D. McCoy cookout, and he puts his ads up and goes, I'm no longer a panther. And he panther. just announces his pantherhood. No longer a panther. <laughs> and fully engages into supporting East Dillon. To me, that not was fully. Have y'all noticed that he start his clothes start to gradually change in the color spectrum? I never noticed this type of stuff, but I totally noticed that. So like when he first started showing up to the East Dillon games, that's when I'm like not totally. He's wearing like a it's like a maroonish kind of black shirt. Like it's not he's not full on or it's like a like it's like it's like you see him move from the blue <laughs> to the red. And then like by the end, you're right, man. He's like full on, you know, lines. I also feel like it's an interesting take because you can see you know, Buddy just didn't inherit this. He, he kind of built it and with his personality. And you can see him rebuild a program with boosterism from the ground up. And it's kind of amazing about just how good he is at what he does. So Yeah, Buddy was great. Uh, we'll, we'll get more of him in the second half of season four. 
I was about to, to let loose a spoiler, but I, I will save it for the next episode because there's a really great buddy moment in the second half of season four. It's never stopped you before, especially on Twitter today, Tyler. Oh, whatever. People knew that new characters are coming. What? Uh, the, the fact that you have Becky as a new character, I mean, there could have been a new character and they still would have been at Dylan. Now, she had a list of them. She was like, we're going to talk about me. <laughs> all and all some, freshman class people. And, well, that's what I said to the guys. This guy responded back and was like, um, I'm on season one. And I was like, oh, you're going to meet some friends. <laughs> people graduate yeah, from high I mean, school. <laughs> are you saying there was Spoiler a alert. The <laughs> <Dawson>. <laughs> people are in high school forever. <laughs> All right, so favorite storyline. Uh, I'll go first. Mine's super obvious and probably, you know, whatever. But Coach Taylor winning the team over the East Dillon Lions. Because, you know, it, it started when he took over. They had to forfeit the first game. He made that decision, which was not popular. But eventually he wins them over. And that moment where they have that practice at night where he doesn't think anybody's going to show up. And then surely, slowly but surely, people show up. I thought it was awesome. Like, I love that moment. So that was my favorite. What was yours? I mean, I think the buddy one. I'll just be <laughs> honest. I mean, I Fair went enough. through a bubble list in my head. But honestly, that is the arc of Buddy yeah. Garrity. That, and you've been talking about that for a while. And I love Buddy. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's my favorite character. But I've been waiting for that moment. And to me, that's when it's just like, look. Buddy is is more than just this, you know, one dimensional character. Yeah, uh, and they've been showing little bits of that. They did a lot of it with season three, and it, it definitely came out for season four for all the reasons I already stated. How about you, Barnes? For the first half, I'm not sure. Um, I guess, I guess I kind of got into Matt and Julie stuff um, for the first half. Um, I liked how You're this is something depressing. that we've talked. About. Well, we've talked about before how um, Tammy and Coach um, are able to, at this point in their acting journey, um, working together, communicate really well how they feel without talking. Um, yeah. and everybody really being in the moment and understanding what they're going through. Um, I feel like we got there with Matt and Julie. Um, their breakup, if you recall – wasn't an actual conversation it's like they were sitting in the car and they yeah. looked at each other and uh and everybody knew they'd just broken up and they didn't even say anything <laughs> it was uh it was really good um so i actually had that as my realest moment as well yeah that, that's a good one because seriously goes through so much this season you know he sticks around dylan he says to take care of his grandmother it's really to be with julie um his dad dies he's kind of spinning he they they do that weird trip to austin where julie doesn't tell her, his, her mom that they're going and oh julie, i had him i had him 150 percent going to the army because of everything that you just said uh and because of his dad yeah i'm glad he didn't um, yeah no yeah. seriously he would have been his dad I mean, his dad went to the army to I mean, all you guys are all about parents, kid, mumbo, jumbo, psychological crap. You know, I mean, that would have been the, the predictable thing for him to do. Would have, you know, his dad was running from everything and didn't really know what to do. So he, you know, uh, joined the Army so he didn't have to deal with stuff at home. No, but seriously, he, he's the antithesis of that. Like, he doesn't run. He would have been he easy. Stays. It would have been easy, though, for him to do it. He doesn't. Do that. Yeah, but he doesn't, he doesn't do the easy thing necessarily. That's kind of not his M.O. Yeah, and that's why the, the, the shot of him driving away from Dylan was really good, I thought. It's impressive because he does the hard thing yep. in that. Yeah. And I don't he also doesn't say I mean, he doesn't say goodbye. That was kinda of Bush League. But it's so well, the high school. Especially to Landry. Landry didn't do anything. And so uh, I'm Landry glad. Will no, be believe fine. me, Landry got a phone call. Landry, Landry got a phone fine. call. He didn't, remember later on, spoiler alert. No, no. No, I do remember later on, spoiler alert. He chewed him out. There, there, yeah, no. So, anyways, moving on because I don't want to pay fifteen dollars on the spoiler. <laughs> Has yes. it gotten up to fifty dollars? <laughs> no, fifteen dollars. <laughs> oh, fifteen. Um, he he was not running away. He was moving forward. That's good. That's a good way to think of it. Because who yeah. he's too talented to stick around, Dylan. I mean, we didn't go through those stupid two episodes where he was shadowing that artist guy who yeah. you know, oh, that was the worst that was that was up there on my least favorite storylines actually my, my least favorite storyline 
was Saracen sticking around Dylan just because it was painful to watch. It was just like, just go, man. Like you're you're at working at a pizza shop, like you're delivering pizzas. Like, come on. I don't know. What was your least favorite? Um I didn't like the interaction between uh Saracen and his, you know, quote unquote mentor art guy. Um, yeah. And uh, it was just, this wasn't my least favorite moment per se, but it, it was a moment that had to happen and just the dealing with the grief of Saracen's dad passing away. It was really sad. Uh, it's a hard episode for me to watch, um, but I also know that the actor did a great job, probably deserved an Emmy for the whole season, even though he was in half of it. Um, it's just... Oh, you're talking about Lila? No. Nah. The guy Saracen. who plays Saris. The guy who plays Saris. <laughs> so I was kidding, because she randomly showed up in an episode. That was a bad That yeah. was actually... Uh, I, I want more of that Lila. I want third, fourth season Lila, not second, first season Lila. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> when I say least favorite, it was just hardest for me Baby Bop's not in the first Oh, no. uh, yeah. It kind of looks like Baby Bob. And- <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, let's so talk about Lila. You don't have, yeah, baby, I don't, I don't you don't have Buddy's chin. I do not. We'll talk about Lila because she does show up. Um, so she Boy, comes. She? she comes back for Sarah's and Dad's <laughs> funeral. Slash, I guess it timed well with her fall break. I'm, I'm not really sure what Vanderbilt's academic calendar is like. I think it timed well with. She needed to. Yeah. Yeah, okay, on three, everyone raise your hand if you've ridden a mechanical bull. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I knew whose hand and only hand was going to come up. Are you serious? Are you, what are you no. no. It's because they live in Nashville. They're, like, too cool for it. It's what no, I, I – we went we to, have one in Nashville. There's one in St. Louis that we saw. So, I've been to Texas several times. And, and you elected not to ride it? Why, Why would, would I want to ride it? Why not? Did you not see how much fun it was? <laughs> no, was like, it's not fun. It's, it's, yeah. it's more fun for everybody that's watching you. It's and you look really hot when you do it, Matt. I think that's there you go. They, so, <laughs> no, you have a really, really horny old guy that's <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that when they get a girl on there. There he is. I, there he is in the picture. He's right over the tip butt. Jiggles the line to make you jiggle up on it. He kind of And then looks- whenever he wants you to be off of it, he can just get you off of it. So it's not even like a competition. <laughs> There he is. He's right there. He's right there. You're right, Matt. There he, he looks is. like Tom Cree. Yeah. Look oh, at that's, him. That's, that's Tom Cree <laughs> back there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's making out with that bottle like it's his son. Yeah. Yeah, so Lila, I mean, I, I get it. it. Everyone who's been in a serious high school relationship and they break up when they go to college, most people have this moment where they come back for fall break and if they're you not have with the – yeah, they're not with somebody that's all ready. It's like, well, you know, I'll just, you know, we'll hang out. And then it's like, well, do we do I miss this enough to commit to trying to do long distance? And usually it's no. But I, th- I actually found that storyline pretty realistic. Um, Check out that yeah. lady back in the background next to the, I think that's a lady in a cowboy hat. Oh, I thought this you were talking girl. about the one on the far right. A lot, lot going on there, too. But, yeah, the one on the far right, I think I wish that she was Sarazen's grandma. She would have been way more fun than the actual Sarazen grandma. Her I mean, what is that on her shirt? That says Texas, to be honest. Yeah. Look at that grin. That grin says, look <laughs> you know at what she's getting I know tonight. what she's doing. <laughs> Been there, uh, done that. Herself, that boy needs to cut his hair. Wearing it now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's getting pregnant. Oh boy. Uh Barney, it sounded like you had thoughts about Lila's return when we were kind of previewing it on the last Yeah, it was just I just found it to be completely random. It's it's like if you have if you have two Minka Kelly coins and you can use those coins at any point during the episode to redeem for a Minka Kelly appearance. I just thought it was really strange to to use that capital on the uh, Sarah's and dad funeral. But but what was good was when Becky comes up yes. and knocks on the door with Tim and Lila's just like, 
Yeah, that was perfect. that is one of my favorite moments. She's, she bats her eyes at her to say hi. That that was a Billy Clyde moment right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough reason for her to come back. Because I agree. She's like, she, all, her face says, "I'm older than you. I'm hotter than you. Yes, I had sex with Tim last night, and you didn't." And it's just very like. It's what I'm talking about, baby right. Bob. <laughs> I thought that was awesome, and also like. It was super, super awkward when Lila comes by a few days later and Tim's not there, but, but Becky is. And Becky's like, you're so pretty. Like, Why you know, must be easy for you? Was that your most awkward moment, Tyler? No. Um, <laughs> Mine was two words. Oh, Glenn. Yes. Was that, was that, <laughs> he's the assistant coach, right? No, Glenn was the teacher oh, yeah, okay. that with Tammy. Okay, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And I then she looks at him and goes, oh, oh Glenn. Glenn. Oh, Glenn. <laughs> oh, Glenn. Bless your heart. That was definitely cringeworthy. My, um, my most cringeworthy moment was when Julie and Devin are at the gay bar, and they see the assistant coach, whose name I can never remember. The guy like, I looked it up today. The guy who runs or is the store manager at Sears or something. Yeah, he works at Sears. Yeah, but and she sees him there, and it's just like that in itself is not weird. Let's call him Coach Parrot because he repeats everything that anyone says. All he does is just repeat everything. Yeah, but I just thought. All right, defense, line up on the 20. He's like, defense, line up on the 20. But you know what? Uh, Stand for the trial. Okay. What's up? What's up, baby? Like, like there's no, it's it's an annoying scene because you expect more to happen from that. Yeah. And yeah. in that same episode, and nothing happens. It's they like don't really happens. address it until like three episodes later. So we, I mean, that yeah. typically happens in the second half of the season. But I think we can just go ahead and say, Julie comes up to him and was like, "Hey, I wanted to talk to you about when I saw you at the at the bar the other night," and he pretended like it didn't happen. Right. So I guess this is just Friday Night Lights' way of saying, you know, there are still closeted gay people in the world. I, I don't know. It was it, very it, weird. The problem is, is that Stan seems Coach Stan. That's his name, yeah. I guess. This seems somebody that Coach Taylor would get rid of as soon as he had the opportunity to. But he can't. He well, they started somebody. having some more coaches come over, but, but, but yeah, they use him. And he does become better, but he does so many cringeworthy stuff that yeah. it just – uh, when he guaranteed the victory, that uh, was bad. Yeah, it's just like this is the coach yeah. that you. That was awesome. Put a muzzle <laughs> on. And, yeah, but he's just too amped. He's too excited, and yeah. I think he's great comic relief because he's just such a clown. You know what? A moment that made me laugh that I wrote down: the random Mike Leach cameo in episode two. Did you all catch that? I don't think we did. Oh my god! I, oh said, my goodness! We look have to it go up. find it on YouTube yeah. and play it. Like, well, now we'll get in trouble with copyrights. I'm not dealing with that again. Um, so, you gotta swing your sword, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn off my screen share. I don't think that has anything to do with this. But so, Coach Taylor's at the gas. Hold it up on your phone. <laughs> like that's still uh, gonna you, get you, us in trouble. You talk about it. I'll look it up. Yeah. Oh. So, Coach Taylor's at the gas station, and Mike Leach. It walks up and is like, hey, do you know how to get to Lubbock? Because he was coaching. Oh, yeah, we did. We talked about it. I think I we was, both. Because I was like, who is yeah. that guy? Yeah, and he's well, like. You knew, you knew who it was. Yeah, I don't. I'm hey, you're, yeah, he's like, hey you're Coach Taylor. You coached the Dillon Panthers or whatever. And Coach Taylor's like, yeah. He's like, you've lost your inner pirate. And this is right when Mike Leach had written that book called Swing Your Sword or whatever. And he gives him this weird pep talk about how he needs to swing his sword and find his inner pirate again. And, like, it was really weird. I think I just tuned out during that. No, we talked about it at Well, the I time. remember we also talked about, didn't you think you saw Mac Brown in season one or yes, something? Yes, 100% it was Mac Brown. <laughs> Did we ever uh, determine if that was, like, legit or not? Yeah, Baby Bop is almost positive that she saw Mac Brown as, do a cameo All right, Matt's before. found it. That would have been that would have been early Mac Brown early Texas here. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, station. Okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he like needed directions. So I thought that was weird. Uh, it made me laugh though. Another moment that made me laugh: Julia or Julie making an alien baby reference in episode six because <laughs> the joke is that Gracie looks like an alien baby. Yeah. I thought that was just our joke, but I think well, no, like, now I that I've everybody now that I've finished the series, I've been able to Google safely without fear 
Um, <laughs> and and did you know that there's this is this is three times as sad. That baby is triplets. The uh, and so there's three babies oh. that look so like it's babies. like the Olsen twins, except worse and uglier. And there's three of them. So there's three. There's three. What do they look like now? Them. They're oh. probably not totally normal now. They're. They just, <laughs> <laughs> they were, if there were three of them in the womb, they didn't develop as much in the womb, and so they looked weirder for longer outside. Yeah. That's and they definitely is. look weird. Some groom is going to be surprised at their rehearsal dinner where they start, start showing pictures, baby pictures, and they're about to be like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to backpedal out of this. I think I've – oh, yeah. I guess my Billy Gillespie moment was them forfeiting the game because that would be something that Billy G would do, although not for, <laughs> not for like noble reasons, just because he wanted to like go get a drink or something. I don't know. Um, do we have any other topics we want to cover? Because I've got one more. Well, uh, what, was, what was everybody's most awkward? Um, probably I wrote down, is that the same as cringeworthy? Yeah, that's what I was, cringeworthy. Assistant coach at the gay bar. We, also had, we, had, we had old Glenn. Oh, Glenn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's another cringeworthy Glenn moment coming up in the second half of season four that I'm saving. Yes. Is, yeah, my, my Glenn. Episode eight. He yeah. makes me yeah. cringe every time. Like, you <laughs> knew something was coming. Yeah. And then when I cut, like, I, I love it. That is, that's a great Tammy moment. Oh, Glenn. Oh, Glenn. Oh, Glenn. Oh, Glenn. <laughs> so much pity and so much, like, darling. There was, there was, your heart. It was a lot it's in there. Very bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can we talk about my favorite moment? Maybe laugh. Is it that one? You bet. Uh, okay, I'll Let's pull, go pull, there. pull up the slide. You, you've on. been waiting for it. I have. I've had it pulled up. Riggins and Skeeter. Oh, nice. I'll let you pre. You know, I mean, it, was there a more perfect combo that we have? <laughs> I mean, he goes and rescues the dog again after it was already rescued and returned uh just a great attitude with the dog i love the fact that he had a conversation with the dog in his truck so they could figure out what the dog's new name was i mean and there's just more to come with skeeter you just wait and there's nothing more uh buddy duo combo than tim riggins and skeeter in the truck i don't remember what happens to skeeter do we ever get resolution does he fade away um, I, I don't know. We we just meet him in episode seven. He so. pulls a while. Up. I think I'm sure he, he pulls, continues on just in brief moments. Yeah, he's on in some brief moments, but then I think he just does a, a total uh, Santiago. Skeeter had the most <laughs> significant moment in Riggins' uh, uh, season four, which is he brought him to the land that Riggins right. is blown away about. That's true. Which sets up the second half of season four pretty well. So, any other thoughts before we close it out? I don't think so. All right. Well, Baby Bob, thank you for joining us. Matt, thank you for joining us. We'll, we'll have to make this a regular occurrence. It's nice to have different voices other than just Barney complaining about grandma and talking about the B-dubs waitress. And it's nice to be here and have a voice rather than listen to y'all and talk back to what he says. <laughs> <laughs> because I always have like, a, let me clarify what you mean by that kind of statement. <laughs> so let's, let's get your reaction. We've heard his take on what your reaction was. What was your reaction I mean, to the, the Buffalo Wild Waitress, I, Wild yeah. Wings Waitress? Uh, Maybe Bob. I, have you ever uh, exchanged numbers with the server? We can't see her, Barney. Take down Julie. Because <laughs> nope. Barney thinks that, 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 that has, it, has it happened to everybody. Yeah. So. Um, I, the Buffalo Wild Wings, I just, we were friends for a very long time before we dated to the point where, like, I, I have very strong feelings about his ex-girlfriends from when we were friends, not from when we were dating. <laughs> and... I knew nothing about this. I was so never official just, with her. It was just like yeah, a but thing. It's still like, I mean, it, it was only it was only B dub official. It wasn't it wasn't was relationship official. They just it was, it was raw BS honey barbecue you magazine. BS wings, and you have your B dub wings. Oh it's the kind of BS that we would have talked about before. But it, it was I, a I think it was a surprise. And, and a little like I I, I think well, it was I, surprising that, that she wrote her number down on the on the thing. 
that you pursued a Buffalo Wild Wings waitress. No offense to anyone, but she wasn't ugly. It's a weird. It's a weird way to meet somebody. I like that she wasn't ugly. Like that's not exactly <laughs> that's, she was pretty. That's criteria. Yeah, it's very flattering to me now that I've. <laughs> Oh, I love it. All right. Well, we will have you guys back for <laughs> at least one more episode. I would yeah. have more. Uh, this has been really fun. We're going to cover episodes 8 through 13 next week, um, if that works for you all. We're still, we have like three more to go, I think. So. In four, or where are y'all? Well, In four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we finished uh, two nights ago. Yeah, we finished two nights ago. Four, as you said. Yeah. It, it's a bit of more of an emotional toll. So. Man, four is heavy. Season four is heavy. Second half, yeah. yeah. But it's good. It's good. But it's just like it is a little more than I had. And t- it was just different from the second from a half of every other season. I have a question though. Did the writers change throughout? Like I know the writers strike and everything, but after that, are they different in the different seasons? Do y'all know? I'm not sure. To look up. I'll look it up. That's a great question. We'll look it up for the next episode. Hey, do you think we should spend two hundred fifty dollars to get Buddy on? I'm not paying for we. Do you mean like we? <laughs> if we could get Buddy on though to I say think, something like "Go Cats," the metaphor Go Panthers. I think I would actually pay money just to watch you talk to Buddy. There's a there's a lot of love there. Though. That would be funny. Are we talking but- changing the couch or you know the money that folds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the money that folds up. Yeah, what's the, that's the line. Yeah, I would love America. it for coming to America. Barney, what, have you looked up Vince Gill on Cameo? I mean, oh, no. I'm so, I mean, I, I can just get him to talk to me for free. Yeah, I mean, so I don't really need, yeah. down a great guitar. all I need to do is just enter the Nashville city limits, and we just end up at the same place just by magnetism. Yeah. So I've never really thought about having to spend money like a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he does attract, like, not uh, not attract. He has a lot of random encounters with celebrities. Oh, we found yeah. out anybody that I know. Yeah, yeah. I told totally you. What are y'all talking? About? Which one do y'all know about? Vince Gill. No, I mean <laughs> when when this yeah. happened uh, Labor Day last weekend, uh, I remember distinctly. Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, uh, Tyler asking Baby Bop of. Uh, does this happen a lot for Barney? And she's like, it happens all the time. Well, like, well it's, it's also, time. it's places that are like weird for me to run into them. So it's not really weird for me to run into Vince Gill in Nashville, but like no, when we ran best, in. Best, best. No. We in Boston. This was a good one. Going to the Yankees Red Sox game, A-Rod's like last game against the Red Sox, waiting right outside of Fenway to go in. Totally crowded. And John goes, here comes somebody famous. There's, look, there's a commotion. And I was like, okay. And I start looking, he goes, it's Cal! <laughs> And he's like, hey, coach, I need to, I graduated. Blah, 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 and like, he stops and gets a picture. And, you know, Cal's just like, sure. And goes uh, on. <laughs> still, still to this day, the only, as many UK games as I've been to, as many times as I've lurked creepily around the lodge, this is the <laughs> only time that I ever actually have met Coach Cal was in Boston randomly outside of Denmark. There you go. That's a great memory. That's a great story. I'm jealous. That, that kind of thing happens to him. Brad was way too cool to stop and talk to us. Oh, Brad's got a haircut. Brad's got to, things to, to do. do and close to buy. Yeah. yeah, he's got things to earn, not give. <laughs> That's I've given true. To him. <laughs> okay, That's true. well, let's wrap it up. Um, we will be back next week, and we will finish up season four, and then we've just got one season left, and then it's over. Jumbo Tron, real Jum- football. Jumbo Tron. No. Some of us attract Jumbo celebrities. Tron. Some of us attract Buffalo Wild Wings waitresses. I mean, just, some of us are normal. Some of us ride. <laughs> <laughs> some of us walk off of the set like Matt just dropped the mic. Some of us ride the uh, the mechanical bull, and some of us are too scared. Some of us laugh at the people on the mechanical bull. So, <laughs> all right, guys, we'll see you later. Clear eyes, full hearts. Jumbo drawn. Jumbo. Tron.